Um, let me share the talk with you. And, uh, oh, uh, by the way, before you start, I asked about, uh, unfortunately, the British Council and the employer did reply. Mm -hmm. And he told me that there is no examination. Yeah. So, oh my God, that's so bad news. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Last time I met uh, one of their employees about a month ago, maybe three weeks ago, month, maybe a month. Uh, he didn't say anything. He said uh, there's lots of demand, but it seems that the British uh, Council, they don't want to be held responsible for for any problems or any cases or any uh, people getting sick uh, because of them opening. So I don't think they want to run the risk, basically. This is what I think he, he was Yeah, although, about. like, they have dates available, so I was, like, telling him how come that no, no. No, it's okay. You can just um, uh, take wh uh, whatever date, and then and we will see. Maybe we'll postpone or so. Like I just, I don't. I'm not going to take the risk. I think, unless they, uh, they announce it's officially going to be done. Triple A. Uh huh. Yeah, they haven't announced it yet. No. Um... And because things don't look very good. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Hello, hello. Yeah. Uh, it's disconnecting a lot today. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's try the mm -hmm. other one. Hello? Mm -hmm. uh, can you hear me now? Hello? What about now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. It's clear, but, but your picture is, is frozen. Yeah, both 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 internets are shitty today. The, <laughs> yeah, excuse my French, because uh, the the uh, the four G is and now. I just switched to the four G, but uh, it doesn't look very good, and the Riada wasn't wasn't very good either. So let's uh, let's get the camera back again. Um, but is is the sound okay? Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Yeah, it's clear. Mm. Uh, you were saying something about uh, not running the risk of taking. Uh, no, I don't think I will. Of booking a test. Oh, is this what you were saying? Hello. You were saying about uh, the test, not booking the test. Yeah, I'm not going to book the tests. Uh -huh. I'm not going to take the risk of it because I don't know, like, um, uh, until they officially announce it, he, I don't know who the employer, who, who he is. Uh, I don't know. He, he told me, like, there are available spaces, so whenever you want to, so don't worry. It was this Akram? Did he have a big beard? No, no, uh, on the telephone. On the telephone. You applied to the, yeah, their, their telephone number on yeah, yeah. their Facebook page. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, I don't know about other. They told me that they're, that they're trying to open it because they're, they have a lot of inquiries about when. And but he told me, like, just uh, take it easy. You can book in whenever you want to. So there are available spaces. And when, when we announce it, we, we will tell you. So, yeah. Uh -huh. it, won't, it won't be anytime soon, I think. Yeah, yeah. And uh, things don't look good uh, with, the, with the, the pandemic. With the coronavirus, yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Anyway. So I hope you're wearing your mask. Uh, I'm, I'm staying at home most of the time. <laughs> I don't need oh, mask. okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Last time you told me, didn't didn't really care about the thing. <laughs> Yeah, we did that at the beginning, but then it got got sort of uh, boring, and then I was like, eh. but uh, but I don't go out very often. I don't go out almost at all because uh, um, your I'm, time is occupied with the lessons. <laughs> yeah, more or less. Yeah, so it's uh, there isn't much time to to do things outdoors. Um, 
All right. Okay, so sorry, I interrupted you, so you can you can you can start. <laughs> no, it's okay. Now we're just wondering about the test because um, I, I'm just thinking if it if it would be a good uh, idea to do it abroad, but. Uh, I was thinking that as well because um, they on, on their website on their uh, Facebook page, uh, British Council Libya. They said that like it's opened again, and when you enter the link, uh, it doesn't have Libya. It does have Tunisia and Turkey, but uh, I don't know about the, the broad thing as well. Yeah, because traveling also has its uh, risks, and it also has its uh, risk of getting uh, ill. You know. Unfortunately, because the corona is everywhere after all, so I don't know how. Uh, but ha this depends on how how much you really need the test. I mean, if you have like an offer or plans to study, uh, and these plans uh, they're all they all depend on this. Mm, yeah, maybe you'd be a little more desperate, and you you would have to do it anyway, even if it's abroad. But uh, are you, is it that urgent? Do you need, do you need the test right now? Or, or can it wait? Um, okay, okay. It can wait. It can wait, I think. Mm. Well, at least this way you're, you, you're prepared. Whenever, whenever you need to, yeah. you'll be, hopefully, you'll be prepared. Um, okay, so uh, speaking last time, you were there when we did the free lesson with, uh, I think, with uh, the other teachers, Safar and Fizani, and we talked briefly about uh, about yes. speaking. And I think we also covered this one. So maybe it's better if we check another one, uh, another test. Uh, so speaking, I'll try to quickly summarize uh, what we mentioned last time. Uh, speaking isn't, I don't think we will also need to, to cover the whole the lesson in speaking. Maybe we can even start doing a little bit of uh, writing if, if we finish in time for this. But, but anyways, let's talk about it. So speaking is usually on a separate day. So uh, it's, uh, it's almost never on the same day. It's always either after or either before. Uh, in my case, I remember I did it, I think, uh, the next Saturday, maybe the test was on Wednesday or on Tuesday, I don't remember. But uh, the speaking test was uh, the Saturday after. So it's sometimes uh, after, but uh, some candidates have told me that they've done their test, their speaking modules, they've done them before the, the, the written one. Either way, it doesn't make much difference, I think, whenever you have it, whether it's before or after. And now with speaking, um yes i remember i told you we want to i want to show you the uh, the examples of um yeah the band nine the band, the <laughs> sponge band boy the sponge guy yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, just a second i think there it is it's somewhere one of the hard drive so let me look for it Okay, so let's look for this. Okay, I'll just keep talking while uh, while I look for it. Uh, but this might mean we need to stop the sharing. Okay, so the idea is you do it on a separate day and you need to keep in mind you have uh, three parts. And also I want to look for the um, I'm looking for this for the, the, the examination. Uh, the criteria they use uh, to mark you, because um, there's also that. Uh, it's interesting. Here you can see how they um, they mark you. Okay, here it is. IELTS. Mm -hmm. Okay, it should be in this file. Mm. 
this one. Uh -huh. Good morning. Okay, this is one of them, yes. I think I found it. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Uh, here I found these. Um, this is, I think, one of them was five. Uh, okay. Okay. Now I can share the screen. Um, okay. I'm going to let it play. It's a little long. I don't. I hope I don't bore you because you 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 need to see the whole thing, of course. But I don't want to tell you which. Uh, what band score each one of them scored. I want to leave it a bit like a surprise. So you can, uh, you can be the examiner and you can tell me what you think and how good these students are, these candidates. Uh, okay, so I'm going to play this. Can you see the screen? Yep. Morning. Yeah. My name is Judith Harvey. Can you tell me your Okay, uh, these are real exams, by the way. Um, really? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, uh, le let me know if the, if, if the volume is okay and if it's clear and if there's no disconnection in the internet. But let's just use the, the beginning. Good morning. My name is Judith Harvey. Can you tell me your full name, please? My name is Jasmine Ability. Loud and clear. Okay, great. Uh, all right, excellent. So let's, let's see this one. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, so I'm still here, but I'm going to check a few things on the phone. So it's, the camera is also on. So. Thank you. And can you tell me where you're from, Rasia? Anyway, if you have any questions or you need to interrupt or something, just use... Uh, I'll just type. Type something, yeah. If, if I can't okay. hear, in case I don't hear. Can I see your ID? Identification, please. It's fine. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you some questions about yourself. Let's talk about what you do. Do you work or are you a student? I'm a nurse. Why did you choose this kind of work? Um, I have two reasons for that. First, uh, I'm from Turkey. In Turkey, you have to pass the very difficult uh, exam if you like to go to the university. And uh, I get my uh, mark for the just nursing, I think. And the second one, uh, from my childhood, I always uh, feel like doctor or nurse and uh, help other people. So I really like that, which is my mom always contrasts she because she wants to maybe a teacher, like my sisters. What kind of work would you like to do in the future? I don't know a system in English very well, but uh, maybe nursing advisor or some management job. I don't know exactly. Now let's talk about weekends. What do you usually do at the weekends? Uh, at the moment, my weekends are very really busy because I do a lot of housework and I have a two and a half years daughter. She's a very exciting and uh, energetic child. And uh, she messes up everywhere very quickly. It's not uh, easy to tidy up and uh, fit well. What do you think you'll do next weekend? Mm, I planned something for last week, but I couldn't do it. I'd like to bring my husband to the cinema. And uh, after cinema, maybe we'll go to the TV show stand sometimes. Do you enjoy your weekends now more than you did when you were a child? No, I prefer to be a child again because uh, when you are a child, you just play and you haven't got any responsibility or job to do. But now it's so different and difficult. How important is it for you to relax at the end of the week? Mm, it's very important, but at the moment it's not possible because uh, now I'm studying English as well, it's uh, 
when you start a job or study, you, you would like to be fresh, but it's too difficult to be. Now, let's talk about music. What sort of music do you usually enjoy listening to? Mm, I'm not fan of music a lot, but I usually listen to Turkish music. And the classic Turkish music is get me relaxed. And uh... Has the kind of music you like changed over the years? Maybe pop music, Turkish pop music, probably, yeah. Do you prefer listening to live music or recorded music? Yes, it just depends on the kind of music. In, in Turkey, I prefer uh, live music, but in England, I have to listen to tape music. Do you think listening to music helps you study? Probably not, but I do a lot. Uh, it's okay with the music or maths or something like that, but for the literacy or something we have to just focus on it, it's not. Now, I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say. You can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Here's some paper and a pencil for making notes. Thank you. And here's your topic. I'd like you to describe a special gift or present you gave to someone. Uh, okay, so um, I'm just checking. There's, it's still not over, but I just want to see. Is it was it clear? Are there any disconnections? Everything okay? No, it was it was good. Um, All right, let's let's hear yeah. your your uh, assessment, teacher or examiner. Let's see <laughs> what you think of until now. Now she's she just she's only done with part one, of course, and she's about to start part two. What's your impression? Uh, I think she did well. All right, and let me let me uh, find the, the, uh, okay. Let me uh, look for the the other one. The, uh, where is it? The speaking marking criteria, so I can tell you. Uh, IELTS marking, uh, so I can tell you how you can assess her, uh, or based on what this one might make it. Uh, yes, the band descriptors. This is it. All right. Oh, I'm gonna try. Okay, so here are the band descriptors. You have four categories. You have fluency and coherence. Okay, so you have mm -hmm. lexical resources. You have grammatical range and accuracy and pronunciation. Pronunciation is clear. Uh, grammatical range and accuracy is, is clear. It needs ex no explanation. Lexical resources is vocabulary range. It's just a synonym for vocabulary, vocabulary range, your range, the kind of words you're using, are you using the right word in the right place, um, this kind of thing. This is lexical resource. And the last uh, descriptor is fluency and coherence. Okay, so l let, me, let me read you a level nine uh, quotation. So this is a quotation of a level nine um, band descriptor, okay? So in pronunciation, a level nine student candidate uses a full range of pronunciation features with precision and subtlety, sustains flexible use of features throughout, is effortless to understand. Okay, regarding their grammar, uses a full range of structures naturally and appropriate, appropriately, uh, produces consistently accurate structures apart from slips characteristic of native speaker speech and regarding uh, lexical resource uses vocabulary with full flexibility and precision in all topics uses idiomatic language naturally and accurately uh, and then the last descriptor which is fluency and coherence speaks fluently with only rare repetition or self-correction any hesitation is, con is content related rather than to find words of or grammar speaks coherently with uh, full appropriate cohesive features, develops uh, topics fully and appropriately. Okay, um, so here if we're, if we're talking about the first descriptor, which is, uh, uh, which is uh, fluency and coherence. Here coherence is how, uh, how much sense, how easy is, is it to understand what, what someone is saying? Uh, of course, the higher you are, the, the, the better the candidate is. 
uh, the more coherent his or her speech is, if you get what I mean. So, so, co yeah. so fluency and coherence is, is the flow of, of speech. Does it all make sense? Is it rele relevant to the question? Are you on topic? Uh, this, is, this is how they will mark your, this descriptor, this, this category, the, the fluency and coherence. Lexical resources is clear, I think. The ability to use idiomatic language is important. Um, actually, actually, without it, you won't get a seven. Um, it needs to be natural. Uh, it doesn't mean you have to put an idiom. No, it, it has to be some, some part of normal speech, which is, which is already idiomatic, and you're, you're using it anyway. It's a bit like this. And uh, grammatical range and accuracy here, of course, you, should, you shouldn't have any problems with the tenses. You should be able to use, to use different structures. Pronunciation, I think it's clear. The, the closer your pronunciation uh, pattern, your, your speech patterns are, the closer they are to native speech, the, the better. But again, like I said, you, you'd be surprised when I'm going to show you a, a level nine um, student candidate. You'll see that, I don't want to say he or she, you'll see that they, they clearly have a strong uh, first, uh, first language accent. Uh, it shows they don't, this person doesn't sound like uh, a native, but he got a nine and you'll see why. All right. So let's say, okay. the, uh -huh, what would you give until now, your impression of this candidate? How would you mark her? Um, I'm going to be generous. <laughs> seven. Uh, uh, 6.5, seven. Okay. Nine. Okay. Let, let's see. Let's see now. Uh, now I want you to pay attention to, to, to her control of this tense because now most of it is going to be about the past because in, in section two, mm -hmm. the card, if you remember, where you have to talk about the previous experience. And I'll take you also back to the examiner's question where she asked her to talk about a gift she gave or something like this. So I want you to, to see how she, how she tackles the question, okay? So I'll take you back to the question and we can see how she does part two. To describe a special gift or present, I'd like you to describe a special gift or present you gave to someone. All right. Remember, you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Yes, the special uh, gifts I gave to someone, it was uh, to my, uh, I gave it to my English teacher uh, last year. She is a fan of Turkey and uh, Turkish culture. I gave to her some uh, special uh, glass, which is uh, we just use for the Turkish tea. And uh, she loves Turkish tea and uh, Last when I last uh, my last holiday, I bring some special uh, like a golden uh, Turkish glasses, and she she really liked them. It was special because she likes uh, Turkish culture, Turkish food, and she knows a lot about Turkey. When we are together, we can uh, speak a lot about my culture, my religion, and uh, stuff from Turkey of Turkey, and. She's great, I think, because it's really nice to know somebody from England and know about you all. And oh, another gift, uh, another special gift I give some, somebody who was my mother-in-law. And uh, normally we don't celebrate Mother Days, and she have never, uh, she had never had any present from her child. And uh, in uh, my family, we celebrate Mother Days very specially. And uh, I bought a ring for her. And she was really exciting and uh, sensible because the first time somebody celebrates her Mother's Day, and she, she even don't know, she even didn't know about Mother's Day, but I explained to her and then I give the gifts. And uh, after that, I always do. Thank you. Do you enjoy giving gifts? Yes, I really like to uh, give people uh, gifts. When I saw them, they like it, they're excited about it. I can't. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you
thank you. Can I have the booklet paper and pencil back, please? Okay. What do you think? Uh, um, I think the band will go lower <laughs> than six or seven. Yes, and so five, 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 six. I don't know. I think her grammar. Um, and she was uh, using simple tense and sometimes she was not like, um, I don't know, I didn't feel the, she had a kind of a, a limited vocabulary. She was repeating sometimes. Yes, she was pretty repetitive. Mm -hmm. um, I think she mentioned Turkish culture at least four times, maybe or three times. Yeah. And uh, also regarding grammar, you're right. She had slips, and she, it, she more than once she used the, the present simple tense to talk about the past, and she didn't correct herself. She kept going on. Um, also, the range of vocabulary. She, she didn't have much range. I think she. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now let's see how she handles part three. Part three are the more sort of argumentative, hypothetical kind of situational sort of questions. Let's see how she does. And uh, let's see what you think she deserves. Let's listen. We've been talking about the special gift you gave to someone. And I'd like to discuss with you one or two more general questions related to this. Let's consider first of all, giving gifts to families. What occasions do family members give gifts to each other? Mm. It depends on country because every country has a different occasion. Uh, in England, I have been here for five years, especially before Christmas. The people are crazy about giving gifts, shopping. But for us uh, in Turkey, we have a, a lot of uh, special religious day. Two of them are a very big. The, one of them we celebrate for four days, one of, another one we celebrate for three days, and we both a lot of gifts uh, for family ships and uh, neighbors sometimes, friends, and this, one of them we buy present for poor people, especially for poor people. But what is the difference between the types of gifts given to children and the gifts given to adults? Uh, it's easy to find gifts for children because you can buy toys, books, or some clothes, but for the adults, it's really difficult to find what they would like. So, what types of gifts do people give to adults? Mm, maybe some jewelry or some kind of clothes, probably. And is giving gifts important in families? Yes. Because uh, you show them, you remember them, you love them. It's really important to me. Let's talk about giving gifts in society. What situations in business are there when people might give gifts? Mm, probably, maybe first uh, day they set up their business, they celebrate that and give a present to employees or worker. And or in Turkey, colleagues give each other and uh, or to their boss in New Year. And what about giving gifts to customers? Good way to keep customer, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What types of gifts do businesses give? I really don't know. Maybe some uh, sale or uh, drop in the price, something like that. And how important is gift giving for a country's economy? Mm. I think in England it's perfect for economy because uh, gifts are very important. Uh, normally for us, if you know people haven't got the money, they don't have to buy anything. But I think this country has to buy something. And it is a good uh, circle for to keep uh, money turned and turned again and again. Do you think there's pressure on people to buy too many gifts? Yes, I think so, yeah. Why? Because I, I don't know very well, but if you have a, some special days and you didn't get anything, maybe you will be sad and we expect that. 
do you think it would be better for society if all the money that was spent on gifts was given to help poor people? Yeah, that would be perfect. But I don't think it's possible. But that will be really good. Yeah. Why, why not possible? Uh, because people still like, uh, like have a present or being remembered, something like that. But it would be nice, yeah. Do you think people in society should be made to give money to help other people? Yes. Why? Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't know where is the poor people, or I don't know what there is or not. If the society or the government or the another community has made funds for people, probably I will, yeah. And other people will too. Is it get better for people to give? money or their time to help other people? I'm sorry, could you repeat? Is it better for people to give money or their time to help other people? Yes, it's better because uh, when you need the help, other people will help you and it will be a circle again and everybody will help each other. Do you think that we should be made, or school children should be made to help other people? Yeah, uh, if you tra train at a young age, it will be like a habit for you. When an adult or older, you will always have to keep it. Yeah, it's like a science or not. Thank you very much. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, three minutes. I wouldn't like to be in her shoes. Yeah, she really pressed her at the end. Uh, yeah. But how did you think she handled it? Um, well, I, I think because she was repeating a lot, sometimes she would like speak slowly, pause, um, to yeah, basic meanings of the words, she kept repeating. Okay. So you maybe think four or five. So le lexical resources, not a very good score. <coughs> oh, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> okay. What about yeah. what about her fluency and coherence? What do you think? The descriptor of, because remember we have, uh, we have four. Let me just write them here, this way, and it might be easier. Um. So we have the fluency. What What's the difference between four and five in the fluency? Here. Sorry? What's the difference between four and five in fluency? Four, you need, you, you need to be really, really, I mean, poor to get a four. And as long as you're, if, if you're able to just understand the question, just understanding the question and answering is, is itself usually above five overall. They they won't give you less than five uh, if you're if you're able to understand the question. Usually it's a bit it's a bit like this. So if I'm going to read here from band five, okay, for band five for fluency and coherence, this is what it says. He usually maintains flow of speech but uses repetition, self correction, slow speech to keep going. May overuse certain connectives and discourse markers. Produces simple speech fluency but more complex communication causes fluency problems. This is their fluency for band five. For uh, regarding their lexical resource, it says manages to talk about familiar and unfamiliar topics, but uses vocabulary with limited flexibility, attempts to use uh, paraphrases, uh, attempts to use paraphrase, but with limit, mixed success. With grammar, basic sentence forms, with reasonable accuracy, but uses a limited range of more complex structures. These may contain errors and comprehension problems. And pronunciation shows all the positive features of band four and some, but not all of the positive features of six. And um, they're telling you that basically, if, if you understand the question and you're able to answer, you've already scored a five. I, to be honest, I haven't seen anybody get less than five here in Libya. Almost everybody who takes the IELTS test is usually above, well above five. Above five? Yeah, well above five. The, mm -hmm. the worst of the worst. Five in, in writing is common. 
can easily get a five. If you screw up, things <laughs> five. Five is, is pretty much the handout. They, they'll give you five. Mm -hmm. It's very, very common to get a five. If, you're, if your writing is messy and it doesn't have the, the little things they're looking for, it's very common to get. For, for people who are untrained, who are, let's say, uh, maybe intermediate level, uh, and untrained in uh, in writing, they they haven't picked up any specific uh, IELTS uh, writing training. These almost always get five 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 point five. They almost never get a six. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so they, they, they get a six. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have fluency and coherence. Then we have lexical resources. And then we have. And then we have uh, uh, grammatical range, range and accuracy. Yeah. Grammatical range and the last descriptor is pronunciation. All right. So let's give her. I score. So what do you think of fluency and coherence? Um, I think six, 5.5, okay. 6, something like in between. Her lexical resources? Um, uh, five. Mm -hmm. uh, her grammatical range and accuracy? By the way, what do you think of her grammar in the last part? Mm. I'd give her five also for the grammar. She didn't use a, um, a, a wide range of tenses. She just kept on simple tense. Um, but she did use the word uh, quite, quite well, I think, in the last part. The okay. last part, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay, <laughs> okay give her six then. <laughs> I'll give her over all six. Okay, and what about the pronunciation? I don't want to be mean. <laughs> what do you think for her pronunciation? Um, six. Okay. Uh, seven, six point five, seven. She was good. I understood what she said. She was saying. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even if you give her a seven. Yeah. She will probably score, if you take the average, she will probably score a six. Let's add, ah. we, can, we can add them six and six. And so we have 12 by four. 12 by four is, what? Sorry, 12 and 12, sorry. 24 by four is six. So she got a six. Her overall is six. Yeah. What did she really get? I think it's a six, she got a six. Because uh, in the page on here, I don't have the number, but on the YouTube uh, video, there is there is the actual number. I'll show you where it is. Uh, on the page, she, she does get a six. Uh, let me just confirm. Okay, the, the poor thing is, is jammed. Let's give him a second. All right. So here, let me show you with IELTS. Uh, okay, here's the search. So I think her video is going to appear now. Where is it? Seven. 
two is it? Otherwise, it is 6.5. Okay. Now it's uh, I think it's a six point five because I was just I saw the uh, video a little while ago. Okay. There's one with a seven, but I think it's not for her. Here it is. They actually gave her a seven. Do you see this one? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she got seven. Okay, so this means we weren't we weren't too far off, right? Mm. There is a bit of a difference, of course, between six and seven, but nah, she got a, she got seven. Let's see if there's anything else I mentioned here. Um in the comments, or at least in the description of the video. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, uh, yeah. Something, it's not a seven. Never mind. Let's look at the other one. Um, Okay, take a look at this guy. Oh, crap. You did well. I mean, the examiner was really good with her. <laughs> uh, which one? Writing's not that easy, but... And, okay, now I'm going to try something, but there is... Really can help. This sentence... There is a chance that uh, the internet will be too choppy. Is, is it choppy? Can you hear me well? Hello? Hello, hello? Can you hear me? Hiya? Are you there? Hello? Can you hear me? Oh, shit. Hello, hello, hello.
Hello? Are you back? No? Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> my internet just disconnected. All right, no problem. Now, this one is, uh, is online. Now, uh, there's one thing I'm afraid of because mm -hmm. I'll be downloading and also on Zoom at the same time. If, if you think that the quality, if you can't hear the video anymore, just let me know, okay? Okay. All right, are you ready to, to hear this one? Yeah. <clears throat> This is the speaking test of the International English Language Testing System. Is, is, the, is it clear or is it it's a bit low, right? It's clear. I can hear what she's saying. All right. Taking place on Saturday, the 29th of September at Didtown Center. Center number DD783. The candidate is Javier Manuel Rico. And the candidate number is 00004290. The examiner is Carol Kennedy, examiner number 433816. Good morning. My name is Carol Kennedy. Can you please tell me your full name? Uh, yes, I'm Javier Manuel Rico. And what should I call you? Uh, you can call me Chavi. Can I see your identification, please, Chavi? Right. In the first part of the interview, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. So let's talk about what you do. Do you work or study? Uh, I'm still studying uh, in my final year. Uh, I've nearly finished my, career, my course. And what are you studying? And do you enjoy it? Uh, I'm studying law. And yes, I do enjoy it, most aspects of it. But uh, in this final year, there is a lot of hard work and uh, a lot of reading and i cannot say that i enjoy all of this reading but um what i really enjoy is working on case studies what i mean is discussing cases um i like to exchange ideas with people so what are your future plans uh, i want to have a career in law um i have to decide which area to specialize in first and then maybe study for another four or five years uh, i hope to specialize in environmental law uh, which is the law that businesses use to uh, have to abide by to ensure that their practices do not affect the environment. Let's talk about friendship. How do you spend time with your friends? Like most other people, I think, uh, having a drink or a meal. Uh, I play Coco Sala with uh, some old friends. I think it's called Five Aside in, in this country. There are sometimes six or seven of us. Uh, I haven't been able to to keep it up, so I'm looking forward to, to getting back into it. And is there one person you could call your best friend? Uh, I would say maybe my girlfriend is my best friend, um, although if you ask her, maybe she doesn't say, uh, say this. Um, but among my male friends, I do not think that I have a, a friend who is closer than all the others. Um, in Spain, we tend to have a big group of friends. Um, on the weekend, maybe a Friday or Saturday, we will all go out together, um, sometimes classmates from school or university and a big group of guys and girls, 15 to 20 of us, will go out and have a meal or end up in a club or a bar and sing some music. Mm. Can you tell me about a friend you remember from your childhood? Uh, that is going back a long time. Um, there is a boy that I don't know now, but was a very good childhood friend of mine, was called Hector. Uh, we were about nine or ten years old, and we did everything together. Um, he was kind of geeky, I guess. And I had other friends that uh, I had similar interests with, and I did sport with, but I liked Hector because he was very different. He used to play with chemistry sets and fix engines and things like this. But then we went on to different secondary schools, and we made new friends, and we grew apart. Now let's move on to talk about culture. 
tell me about something that you feel is special to the culture in your country. I mean, it could be food or maybe the music or, or perhaps art and literature. I could talk about any of these things, but uh, give me a moment. Uh, I think it's better that I talk about food. Um, I'm very proud of Spanish art and literature, but I think that I know most about food. You could say I'm a food expert. <laughs> um, actually, I think Spanish food could be more recognized. I mean, everybody knows dishes like tortilla and paella, and there are tapas restaurants in, in every city, but our cuisine is more sophisticated than that. And when everybody comes to Spain, they think that we only ever eat snacks. And when you go for a meal, there are lots of dishes on, on one table. There are some very good tapas restaurants, but most of them are, how do you say, uh, specialized, not specialized, um, standardized. Um, because they make the food so that everybody will like it. Um, it's like Italian food or Chinese food. So is there a traditional dish that's associated with your country? I'd say that there are not one traditional dish, but there are many regional dishes uh, that are famous. For example, paradilla is very famous in coastal areas, which is grilled seafood. And everyone will have every kind of fish you can imagine. Um, but if you're in the mountains, you will eat food that is from the mountains, maybe a deer or goat or things like this. But don't think that Spanish food is necessarily just about traditional dishes. Like I said, the best restaurants are the most adventurous. Thank you. Okay. Uh, was, was, it, was it clear or was there any choppiness? Um. Uh, there was a little bit, but uh, overall, I, it was kind of clear, yeah. <laughs> I got hungry <laughs> just listening to talking about food. Yeah. Now, what do you think of the way he handled the, the questions? Really good. He seems really re relaxed. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, hey. Yeah, his speeching, his speech uh, is good. I mean, it's um, really clear. Um, he doesn't pause. He's like continuously speaking. Correct. Even though he he clearly doesn't have a, a native accent, he, his yeah. pronunciation is still very Spanish. But uh, he made and, and no hesitation at all. So I was like. <laughs> That's Not like true. the Turks, Turk lady, yeah. Yeah, like, uh, no pauses, no pauses, no hesitation, no, uh, no awkward expressions. What? That's even more important. He didn't use any weird uh, sort of translated expressions. He used the proper, the the proper sort of language that a native would use. And it, he's a very interesting case. This uh, this candidate, I think. Um, all right, so let, let's let's see how he does part two. Very very nice the way he uh, he talks about uh, the, his stories. Let's have a look. Now I'm going to give you a topic, and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. You have one minute to plan what you're going to say, and you can make notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes. So there's your paper and pencil. And that's your topic. So I'd like you to describe an event that you attended recently. Okay, 
Now you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time's up. Could you please start speaking now? I'm going to talk about my grandparents' golden wedding anniversary, which was two months ago. They're in their 70s now, um, and have been married for 50 years, so it was a very special uh, day. I've been to many anniversaries and parties and weddings, but I must say that I enjoy this day more than any other. Uh, it was a moving and memorable day. I think that the combination of the importance of the day and the fantastic atmosphere was, was what made it so special. This anniversary was was uh, in a country house, which in Spain we call Una Finca, which is like a, an old ranch. There were many guests who came from far and wide. This venue was perfect because there was uh, a courtyard, a big garden, a magnificent hall where we could have uh, the evening meal. My girlfriend and my brother's girlfriend they came together with us. As soon as we arrived with everybody there, my mother, she saw everybody and started to cry. <laughs> I can tell you that my mother, she uh, cries very easily. and uh, There were plenty more tears uh, on this day. There were musicians playing in the courtyard, like uh, an orchestra, and with just four people, and everybody had a glass of champagne. Now, perhaps the most important thing of uh, this day was the people that I saw there. I saw many uncles and aunts that I had not seen for many years, and many cousins that I had not seen since I was a boy. My mother's brother came from Canada, and uh, one of my grandfather's sisters came from Australia. It was very emotional, and, and uh, it was wonderful to see my grandparents this happy. The best moment for me was when my grandfather made his speech. He thanked my grandmother for sticking with him all these years. And it was not only my mother crying at this point, I can assure you. He is a very good speaker and he made everybody laugh as well. And finally, of course, they cut the cake and everybody came together for the group photo. And, Thank you. So what time did you get to bed that night? I think we were um, some of the last to leave at around 2 a.m. Thank you. Can I have the um, booklet, the pencil and the paper? Thank you. All right. What do, what do you think of his story? Now, you've been telling me. Uh, I, I didn't quite hear at the beginning what he said, something anniversary, so. Correct. Golden anniversary of his grandparents. Do you know what uh -huh. the golden? Yeah, 50th. Yeah. The 50th yeah. year. That was nice. That was a very touching story. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yes, I think it's uh, it's a very good story. And uh, what's even better is not the story itself. It's how he narrated it. How he he told us the story, and the details and the expressions. Uh, far yeah. It was not boring at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very, very interesting uh, phrases. His phrasing, his yeah. expression, the idiomatic language. Uh, people came from far and wide, uh, yeah. which is like uh, there were many tears, uh, uh, there were many shed tears. And, and, you know, he used very interesting ways of expressing yeah. his story. It wasn't just a uh, simple past, simple past, simple past, but as, as most candidates would normally do. Um, okay, let's see how he handles uh, part three. Uh, and then after that, we'll check our last specimen for today. Our last sample. Tell me about an important event in the past that you attended. Now, in the final five minutes of this test, I'd like to ask you some more general questions that are related to this. Let's talk about past events in general. Do you think photographs are the best way to record and remember special events in our lives? That's a, a really good question. And I mean, of course, photos are uh, a part of our lives now in a way that was possible in other eras. Um, I read the other day that more photos are taken now than ever before. And I mean, millions or maybe billions of photos every day. It's as if uh, we have to take a photo to prove that something happened. <laughs> and I can understand that. I mean, I think that people want to remember special events and, and even everyday things too. And personally, I, I love taking photos when I go places and see my friends. And, I also love looking at old photos. I think they can provide an, an insight into the past as well. 
Why do you think that? I think that they can be very powerful and remind us of special places and, and people and even remind us what we were doing this day or how we can be feeling in this, in this moment. Um, they are also a record of our lives uh, visually and, for example, photos of you as a baby and then as a child and that thing is an incredible thing, like a diary. I think it can act as a, a trigger uh, for memory as well. What about written records? Can they also encourage us to remember past events? Written records? By written records, do you mean writing things down like diaries or letters? Yes. Well, yes, I think that writing things down can definitely help us to remember the past, but also the reality is that people no longer write things down in the same way, uh, like long letters or diaries. Some people do, but I think that we have less time and, and patience nowadays, and writing is more of a luxury, I suppose. In fact, I can't remember the last time that I put pen to paper, uh, apart from this exam. <laughs> I think I can just about stretch to a postcard. However, my mom tells me that she kept a daily diary uh, throughout her childhood, recording everything that she did. Uh, she wrote lots and lots during school holidays, especially, and I like the idea of doing that, but I know that I would never get around to actually sitting down and putting my thoughts on a page. And which do you think is better, recording important moments by taking photographs or by writing them down? Well, I'm not sure that I can come down on one side or the other. Uh, though on balance, I would say that visual images is more powerful. Uh, I'm trying to think of a good example here. There are so many famous photos that capture a moment in time. But one particular photo stands out for me is uh, the image of the wall coming down in Berlin in Germany in 1989. When you look at the photos, uh, you can imagine the place and the time and the moment very, very clearly. Uh, and I think it's amazing that one image can do that. Some people think that it's more important to be concerned about events in the future than events in the past. What do you think? I'm not sure that I can agree with that because I do not believe we can make sense of the future unless we understand what happened in the past. Why do you say that? Well, in Spain, we are very proud of our culture and identity, and I'm sure that that is true for many people across the world. Maybe that's why so many people spend a lot of time researching back into their family history. I know that from traveling around to other countries like the UK, how important history is and how important celebrating the past is. It enables people to understand where they came from and where they are going. So in that sense, the past and, and the future are, are linked. Um, so we cannot forget the past, even if we do want to concentrate on the future. Thank you very much. That's the end of the speaking test. Thank you. All right, what do you think of the last question? Hello? Are you back? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me?
Hello? Uh, can you hear me now? Hi. Hello. hello, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello? Oh, Jesus. Today is a horrible day. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes. I'm so is it is it clear? Is Sorry my for this. Hello? Yeah, hi, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Uh no, I can't hear you actually. The the mic is moving but nothing is coming through. Uh Okay, well, now, can you hear me now? Is it any better now? Hello? 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 Hello, 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 hello. Can you hear me now? Hello? Hello, can you hear me now? Aya? Uh, can you see the, the, can you see the, the picture moving? Okay. Hi, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? I can hear you. But the connection is really bad. Uh, let's, let's use the chat. Can you hear me? Hello, 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 hi, hello, hi, mm, I think you're, mm, 
Okay, I don't think you can hear me. Hello? Hi, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, just disconnected twice, so um, I don't know what's wrong with the... Uh, yeah, because today is it like an... The 4G, uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, it's an extra... It's an extra yeah, blackout. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, hello, I can hear you. Hi, hi, can you hear me? Hello? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, I have a suggestion. Aya, are you there? Hello? Hello, can you hear me? I can me? hear you, I can hear you now. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, I have a suggestion. <laughs> hmm. Jesus. Hello? Hi. Are you back? Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Listen, what, what do you say if we uh, postpone uh, this last 45 minutes? Have it some other time because the internet is really bad. Yeah, I can hear you now. This is, okay. Oh, this is did, so bad. Did you hear what I said? No. Uh, okay, so very quickly before you disconnect again. I was saying let's okay. postpone uh, what's left because uh, we've been disconnecting for the last 15 minutes. So at least we can right. do this 45 minutes, what's left. We only covered mm -hmm. about an hour and a half, and, and maybe 15 minutes. So we've got about 40, 45 minutes. We can cover them some other time because there seems to be some kind of blackout around the city. And yeah. the internet is really bad. You're probably going to disconnect in a few seconds now. So what do you say? Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I'll send you the link uh, to the other uh, samples so you can have a look at them and you can sort of get a feel for the differences between the, 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 the sixes, the sevens and this one, uh, 8.59. So you can sort of feel, feel the difference. Okay. Okay, what time would it be suitable to, to finish what's left of this lesson? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> Whenever it suits you, yes. Um, it it might be uh, yeah. sort of in the morning time maybe. Um, bro, mean or? Sorry. Uh, it took me before, right? Because maybe I <laughs> will be here in the morning. It 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 would be some some time before four o'clock. Okay. Because after four o'clock, usually I have the other lessons. Maybe yeah, four. Yeah, I understand. That's okay. It's uh just like um, if you tell me when. Before. Okay, I will. We'll, we'll. I'll send you a message on uh, uh, on Facebook. Okay. All right. Well, so we'll, we'll, okay. Yeah. So we'll, I don't think Rina is going to be uh, joining us anymore. I don't know, but uh, just tell me before so like I can schedule. All right then. Okay. Okay. All right. So see you. Bye bye. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> it's okay problem. because mine isn't isn't much better either than your connection. It's uh, it's not very good. I've been switching between Riyadh and 4G, trying to get each each time I keep switching. Both of them are not that good. And uh, the other last one be on Monday, right? Same time. Yeah, the other one same time. But I'm I'm just saying what's left of this one. What's left of this uh, this lesson? We need to cover it some other time. Maybe tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Okay, if All it's right, tomorrow. Then. Just, just tell me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure, definitely. Yes, I'll let you know t tonight. 
Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. Bye bye. Bye.